So Sam, since you refuse to hear us out this afternoon, your mother and I are putting this in writing so that we are absolutely clear. You're grounded for the rest of the month for for social and telephone privileges and from using your your car anytime except going to the prom or to and from school. We understand what you are going through, but we can't allow you to continue with this kind of behavior at school. And clearly, once your privileges are reinstated, we can't allow you to have your beloved door closed while Lonnie is in the house. This is the last word on the matter. Get back on course so we don't have to have... Or so this won't have to happen again. Dad. I had an interesting talk with Mom and Dad tonight. One you were never gonna need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. I've known since, like, she -Ra. Mom and Dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and stuff on the locker, and they were like, is there something we should know about you and Lonnie? And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad, or disappointed, or start crying, or something. But they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them. Because they're in for one very long phase. That always seems to be the example a lot of parents seem to choose is that it's just a phase for some people it is but for a majority it isn't but over here we got a, a uncrumpled manuscript isn't it really crumpled don't give up on this honey okay so was there any other doors over here see that was like the dining room here you just have like the kitchen whenever it's just a couple people here but my god the Accidental Savior. Oh, this is the one that didn't get published. The third one. November 21st, 1963. John Russell knows the president's life hangs in the balance. But who would believe him? Poor guy. Didn't get that published like he wanted it. Bratmobile. Some special. Here we go. I'm just going to put it back. <laughs> I don't appreciate that music. I'm just joking. It's just not my type of... I thought I saw something. I'm going crazy right now. <laughs> Fish sticks. Uh, what do you got? Frozen spinach. Corn. More spinach. More corn. Anything in the drawers? Not in the drawers there. Oops. Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Blair request for the honor of your presence at the marriage of their daughter, Helen Margaret, to Mr. Richard Morris Pattermock. Sunday, the 4th of June, 1995, at half past four o'clock in the afternoon, Sunset Lutheran Church, Seaside, Oregon. Seven schedule working at the Crown of Burger on Bethel Road. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 3 to 7 p.m. and 12 to 6 on Saturday. Those working hours when you're a kid. You, well, at least, I mean, it doesn't appear as though they've been gone too long. Because, I mean, they still have milk. There's still f uh, fruit there that doesn't look like it was going bad or anything. So, who knows? See, I'm wondering if they're, like, everything is just, like, interactable. And then some of this stuff I don't even need to open or close or vice versa and all that mumbo jumbo. There we go. Can we not open that? No. Oh! Another one from Bruce Pendleton. Dear Regional Conservation Director Greenbrier, having received your formal acceptance letter, I write to congratulate you on your new position as Regional Conservation Director at the State Forestry Service. We wish you luck in your final weeks at Flinton National Park or Flintlock National Forestry or Forest, and very much so or very much look forward to welcoming you to your new desk in the State Forestry Office at 8 a.m. on May 1st. 
Congrats, Mom! Is there anything up here, possibly? Nope. Uh... Does it even say that I'm coming back? Katie comes home this month. There we go. But we'll call and expect dates. Oh my my. Dustpan. Now I'm like gonna check to see if there's like any secrets. Oh. You can actually read the full nutritional guide. But you probably want to do that. That's bad. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything here just looks like your standard you can put st <laughs> oh why is he on a ranch dressing bottle that's not ranch but thousand island dressing oh we didn't even check over here yet just more plates more mugs very plain mugs these people have here cooking low fat for the whole family Oh my. Oh, here we got a garage too. Sam, your mother and I will be away for a long weekend celebrating our anniversary June 3rd to 7th. We will be camping in the George or Gorge. But we will give you a call on the way home. Sorry, the kitchen is still MIO, MIO renovation or mid renovation. Wow. Never trust the contractor. $40 is on the table to order some pizza while we're gone. Be good, Dad. I asked Lonnie what she had to do to get ready to ship out for basic training. She said, not a lot, really. You're not allowed to bring anything with you. You have no possessions. No contact with the outside world while you're in basic. You just train hard every day, and then you deploy from there. So... They'll just send her away. To who knows where. The other side of the country. The other side of the world. My mind, like, can't process it. She's really going to be... gone. Just gone. So this is from Unknown Dimension. It says, Dear Mr. Greenbrier, First, let me say that I hope this miss missive finds you well. Hell, it feels like a goddamn miracle that it finds you at all. Do you know how long we've been trying to track you down? Worry not. We aren't the feds, the men in black, or any other sort of creeping fascist hobo or hobgoblins. In fact, we're on your side. Let me start from the beginning. Unknown Dimensions is where you might call a specialist publishing house. We traffic in the weird, the head, the ahead of its time. The lost but not forgotten by a small but dedicated group of plugged in bibliophiles type of out there mass market shunning visionary expression that refuses to be taken on anything but its own terms. Wow, that was that was a mouthful. We've had unparalleled runs since the inception four years ago, unearthing and reviving Christ or zombie like timelines, works such as NN. Bestman's Message of the Snake Man, It's Inside Me by Jens Keller and Emil Krieger's off band Venizen Flesh Traders. But ever since we discovered tattered copies of your accidental series at a church rummage sale in Long Branch, New Jersey, we've been trying to track down the author of this weird and dark American outsider art. It's just kind of forgotten portal into the 20th century civilization anxieties and delusions that our readers lose their minds over. James Bond and Harrison Ford might be the dick-swinging heroes for the modern suburban American America wants, but John Russell, mild-mannered, insurance agent by day, reckless history-revising sociopath by night, is the twisted peacekeeper that it deserves. It is our mission to bring him back to life. Okay, so I've, played, I've typed plenty. What do we want from you? We want your permission to reprint the book, since your original publisher of Mercury Books folded a decade ago. We want to supply you a new foreword for the books to appear in brand new editions of The Accidental Savior and Accidental Peria, to be produced by Unknown Dimensions as a limited run and marketed directly to our highly discerning customer base. And we want to offer you a portion of the proceeds, contract to follow assuming you're interested in coming along with us on this weird odyssey. 
We look forward to embarking with you and to thrusting your your screaming, your your work screaming back into the sweat sweating palms sweating palms of unsuspecting American public. It's about time. Blast off. My God, that that entire friggin' like letter was just oh, hurts to read so much. There's a lot of reading in this game, but like I said, it's it's very it's awesome that it's very. I don't know, it just it's it's crazy. Oh, this is the one from Barcelona. Remember the one in the the kitchen? We said we were off to Barcelona. It says hi, mom, dad, and Sam. I've had a wonderful time on the beaches of Barcelona, dad and Sam. I think you would like gaudy architecture. It is from a strange alien world. I'm headed to my final destination, Amsterdam. For how long? That depends. I'm running low on money. I will look for a cheap standby ticket and call you when I'm headed home. Sorry for the show notice. Can't wait to see you all again. It'll be good to be home. Love, Katie. And then, of course, it looks like we got a crumpled piece of paper over here. Booted out, Girl Scouts. It's peace out, Girl Scouts. The last show ever. A going away show for Lonnie D. All ages. Lonnie had her going away show with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. And she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. That I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song to me. I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. Jesus. Open. Is there no turn anything in here? There totally is. Sam, I wish I knew how to explain it better. The army is the thing I grew up with. It's part of me. My dad's army friends are like family. I've always known it was here, or, or I, I, I've always known it was where I'd end up. I never thought of it in any other way. I wish things could be different. Maybe someday, when I'm settled at a base and you're done with college, and you're a famous writer and I can rebuild a tank engine with my eyes closed, things will be different and we can be together. Until then. Fortunately, the last part of the note is ripped off there. And it didn't look like there's anything else. Oh, there's a pin. I see you, pin. The slits. Ew, that's a really gross band name. <laughs> So now a greenhouse. I assume this is where like typewriting gets done because there's a typewriter here. Ooh, manuscript. The accidental human. Strong Pines a couple's counseling retreat. See, the parents don't look they sound like they're happy or anything like that. So there's this is the second piece of information that we found that leads to them not being happy with one another. Because the one was the other one was with sexual, spiritual, and other types of healing. Says, dear Kaz, I can't tell you what a joy it is to see John Russell back into print. Thank you very much for sending along copies of the new editions. The cover art is really something. I know you said your unknown dimension isn't in the business of printing new material, but this revived interest in my work has brought on a wave of inspiration resulting in a manuscript that completes John Russell's journey, which I think you might find intriguing. It is reflective and introspective without forgetting the excitement and weirdness that Unknown Dimension readers expect. I hope this might be an exciting new direction for Unknown Dimension to pursue. At the very least, I am grateful that John Russell's adventures didn't come to an end quite when I thought they had. My thanks and regards, Terrence L. Greenbrier. Jails. Then we could type the cover copy. It's, it's been almost 20 years since John Russell heard the call. Twice he saved President's life. He He's practically forgotten the day of the future, of danger and excitement, the days where he mattered. So when the familiar rip in times opens in front of him and his handlers peer out, he doesn't hesitate. Is the president in danger? 
know. The life you save this time will be your own. Woo! My God, that's crazy. Oh, secret door. Midnight, June fifth. Final preparations are complete. Where we'll do it. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past. And there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I cried. And she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up, and I was finally alone. Oh, that's so sad. Whoa. Whoa, what the fuck is this? That's the attic key. The f honey snaps. Feel the for winners. The light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic. And wait. Oh god, I hope she's alive. But I don't know if she actually left or anything. Because I don't know when this all happened. But I mean, we're finally able to actually go into the attic, and that's... It says we're not supposed to go up when the red light's on, but I honestly have no idea whether or not there's a way to turn it off. Because if she if she's alive, and she has photos that she wants to keep, I don't want to be the dick that ruins it, you know? Here we go. Please be alive, sis. Sister. Please be alive. Oh, this is... I don't want to... I don't want to go anywhere. What if she's, like, legitimately dead or something? Sam, I'll always remember what we had. Stay strong. Kick ass. I love you. Lonnie. Oh, my God. Katie. Uh, I fell asleep in the attic. In Lonnie in my old spot. And I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie, on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't, she couldn't think of anything but me, and us, and that she couldn't go through with it, with the army and being a part, and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can, and get in your car, and come find me. And let's just drive, until we find somewhere. For us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said yes. Yes. Okay, you have no idea how much of a relief that is. I'm kind of tearing up because of that. I'm not gonna lie. A... Shut up! <laughs> oh god dang, that actually made me really sad and in a, in a super happy way, because, like, you know, you always love to hear about a happy ending like that, and I honestly thought that Lonnie was gone. Just, uh, just, every, everything that, everything that we've come across with, you know, learning more about Lonnie, it just seems like she's actually very adamant on staying, but to hear that she came back for Katie, awesome. Katie, I'm so sorry. That I can't be there to see you in person. That I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal, and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. And that you won't be sad, and you won't hate me. And you'll just know that 
I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again. Someday. Love, Sam. That was fucking amazing. I honestly did not expect... I, I, I didn't know what kind of story this was going to be. Like, I knew it was going to be like an interactive story, and I, I came prepared for that, but... To have something that compelling and that amazing and so happy... I, I honestly thought you were dead the entire thing, like, the entire game, because I thought it just, be, it just came across as super dark and everything, and I'm just so happy that... Sam and Lonnie are together. I'm hoping. It's 1995, so. But, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to let me know what you guys thought of this, because this is a very interesting game that I've... I have to say it's, like, one of the very first that I had to... I played. And... It was awesome. If you guys want to go check it out yourself, there's a link in the description down below. It takes you to Steam, so if you guys don't have it. But, anyways, guys, like I said, be sure to let me know what you guys thought of the game. I loved it. And hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll talk to you guys in the next series. Peace out, Girl Scouts.